Safe is one thing, but what about efficacy rate? Why does it vary in countries? What is the explanation? And uh, my question, uh, to, to, to combine that with my question as well, uh, you know, this term gets thrown a lot. And I think some people uh, interpret it as uh, this is how effective it's going to be. And when, when they think about that, then they look at 95%, they look at 60%, and it's like, oh, this, uh, there's one vaccine that's, be that's better than the other. Could you help us uh, understand what the term efficacy rate uh, is? Yeah, um, you know, absolutely sure. And, you know, thanks, Betty, for, for the question. Um, it's it's something that I think uh, is probably a product because, you know, sometimes scientists are not the best communicators and we assume that, you know, what we, you know, mean is universally understood. Um, so um, I'll attempt to explain uh, what efficacy is uh, in the context of uh, vaccines. Um, first of all, I, I just want to point out that when we talk about efficacies and when you see the numbers that are actually available for the various different vaccines, uh, number one is that it's not population, uh, sorry, it's, it's population based, uh, but not individual uh, based, right? The, the second thing is that um, when you actually look at the vaccination efficacy numbers, um, that they are also measured slightly different and there are some subtle differences in the way they actually measured for each individual vaccine. The third is that there is absolute, um, you know, number when you talk about efficacy, it's not an absolute number, but actually a relative number. And the fourth point is that when you actually look at efficacy in general, um, we got to think about efficacy uh, that is continuously evolving. And the reason why I first talked about efficacy being a population level number and not an individual number is that we need to first understand that this efficacy is the average number at a population level. Um, after thousands of individuals that have undergone the clinical trial. And it's not transferable to an individual level. And so you cannot take those numbers, which is for an average population and say, okay, therefore, if I take this vaccine now, uh, this number is, is exactly the number for my individual self. And this is because there are significant variations that exist between individuals. And as a geneticist, the first variation is that our genetics are different. Our differences influences our disease risk, our immune response, and how we process vaccines. Our comorbidities is another issue. We know that individuals with comorbidities have a higher risk of um, COVID-19 disease as well as severity and our outcomes. We also know that our exposure to viruses differ. The more or bigger the load of virus, when it actually infects us, will actually result in a different outcome. And the load of infection and how long we have been you know, exposed to that infection is also a key determinant of us getting the disease and the severity of it. Then there's also individual behavior. How often do we use our mask, right? How do we protect and choose to, to reduce our risks? But one of the biggest things that we are slowly understanding is how there are various different types of variants and new mutations that are actually occurring in the virus. And we now know that different types of virus variants of the same SARS-CoV-2 virus have different transmissibility or infective rates. And this is the reason why comparing two vaccines that underwent clinical trials separately in different locations, in different populations, in different um, you know, sort of uh, regions, and most importantly, different time points really does not make sense. For example, the Pfizer and Moderna efficacy data were primarily generated by clinical trials in Western countries, in fact, primarily in the US. And these trials for both mRNA vaccines, which show very high rates, 
were relatively low in terms of infection rates when these trials were actually done. And the, vi the variant, right, the prevalent variant of SARS-CoV-2 virus that was present during that clinical trial and today is so different. For example, in the US, the UK variant, the Kent variant is now the most prevalent variant, which wasn't detected during that clinical trial. Whereas the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, for example, where you notice the efficacy rates appear to be lower, was trialed during one of the peak infections, where there's a huge wave. And many other vaccines that you are seeing now, the, the newer vaccines or the vaccine newer trials that are coming out, are all being tested in different parts of the world where there is different prevalence. In fact, you will notice that even the um, Sinovac uh, vaccine, right, that has been approved, the Coronavac vaccine. The vaccine has got various different um, uh, 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 efficacy rates. In Brazil, for infections, it's about 50 something percent. Uh, for in Turkey, it is 80 something percent. But what we need to take from there is the protection from severe disease is more than you know, 80, 90, almost 100%. And ultimately, this is what really, you know, really matters, right? And this brings us to the next point of why these numbers also need to be put into context is because different trials have different measures of efficacy. For example, the Pfizer and Moderna uh, clinical trials defined a case as having at least one symptom, however mild, and a positive COVID-19 test. Whereas the Johnson & Johnson defined a case as having a positive COVID-19 test, plus at least one moderate symptom, such as the shortness of breath, abnormal oxygen uh, levels, or abnormal respiratory rate, or having two milder symptoms, so you can see that the measures that are being used by these clinical trials for various reasons, especially because they've been done in various different time points, are so different. And finally, I think a very important misconception that I think needs to be made very clear is that when we talk about efficacy, it is not an absolute efficacy, but a relative efficacy. So a lot of times I hear when we talk about efficacy, um, and when someone says that the vaccine has 95% efficacy, we think that, oh, so 5% of vaccinated individuals will get COVID. But that's not true. The actual percentage of vaccinated people getting COVID is a lot less. That is because the efficacy is not an absolute number. It actually is calculated relative to the control group in that given period who weren't vaccinated or who received the placebo. So a 95% effect efficacy actually means that on the average, vaccinated individuals have a 95% lower risk of getting COVID-19 as compared to a control group of participants who weren't vaccinated or received the placebo. In other words, vaccinated individuals on an average have 20 times less likelihood than the control group in terms of getting COVID-19. So it's really important for us to put these efficacies in, in, in numbers that we see out there into context. And for me at this juncture, especially for what we know now, it is really important that although primary efficacies may appear to be different, what is very clear is that the efficacy of the vaccines in inhibiting moderate and especially severe COVID-19 uh, symptoms is almost universally above 90% to 100%. In different trials, across all the different trials, across the different time, uh, as well as different locations. And for me, that is what matters. Because I think we will all not be talking about COVID-19 if it actually just caused you know, some sniffles 
and maybe a loss of uh, you know one or two days of work. But it's the hospitalization, it's the ICU, and it's the almost 3 million deaths that have actually occurred. And we have to pause and think about the 1,300 lives that have been lost in Malaysia. And so that is why when we talk about efficacy, our focus really needs to think about immunity in the context of how we actually inhibit against the severe implications of COVID-19. And we know that together with public health measures such as masks, these efficacies will be really high once our population has been vaccinated and achieved herd immunity.